Howdy folks and welcome to 15 Nautical Mile Arc. I am very excited today because as you can see we are back in the 727 200 Advanced version 2 by Fly J Sim. And we are finally doing the return leg from Chicago back to Minneapolis. So we're at O'Hare at gate F7, Foxtrot 7, and there's a nice sunset about to happen. And we're going to head back to Minneapolis. If you remember like six months ago or something... We um, flew from Minneapolis to Chicago, and now we're finally flying back. The reason it's been so long is because I just haven't had time to make this flight. And I decided tonight, it's a Friday night, I'm going to stay up way past my bedtime, and I'm going to fly this thing back home. And um, I did my practice flight the other night. I always practice when I do Slant Alpha, just to make sure the radio frequencies are going to work out, because as you know, the sim... It's a little different than real life in terms of ranges and things like that. So we got all that figured out and we are ready to go. Uh, it's also going to be exciting because I'm going to do a little bit of hand flying of this thing today. Normally I hit autopilot at the end of the runway and I don't disengage it until we're like 100 feet off the ground and we're about to land. So we're going to hand fly a little bit. We're going to hand fly the departure and then we're going to hand fly... The entire arrival plus a little more. And I'll explain why when we get closer. I'm going to follow a very specific, unusual approach that I experienced in real life. I'll talk about it when we get there. Looks like clear skies today, so we should have some good scenery of the night. And um, that is about it for the introduction. I want to get going before that sun goes behind the horizon. Because I want to see the Chicago skyline, which is over there, um, in the sunset. And we're going to miss it if we don't get going. And now when I jump in the plane here, you're going to hear the sound. I do have external power turned on. So there you go. You hear that. And we are about to get this thing underway. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our passengers. Not that one. This one. 80 passengers. We're going to have a fuller flight than that. Flights from Chicago to Minneapolis are always very, very full and very heavy. And... um that's what we're going to do. 99 passengers. Let's keep it 99. And our distance then for fuel, 347 nautical miles, but we're going to go 451 for our range. Whoops, I passed it. There we go. And everything is good. Balanced well. Blah, blah, blah. That's all we need there. V card, we'll check that out in a minute. Now, there are checklists if you want to go through this checklist. You can. What I did is I took this checklist built in and combined it with the real checklist of the real aircraft from Boeing and made my own checklist. So it's like a compromise between the two. So anyway, if you haven't seen this thing before, I would suggest you check it out. It's my favorite plane and X-plane. Even though I'm a general aviation guy, I'm a GA guy, I still think this is my favorite airplane in all of X-plane. Anyway, let's get going. So we did the passengers, the fuel, and the cargo. So first thing we're going to do is hop over here and turn on our battery. And then we're going to go back here and set up our APU. Get that going. Um, I see people trip it. I don't think you need to. I think you just need to turn it on. And this takes a couple minutes. But through the magic of editing, it's going to be done right now. All right, our temperature's climbed enough, so now we will... Close the field and generator, and that should kick off external power, and it has. So now we're running on APU power. If you listen carefully, you can hear it start up. All right, so we're going to come over here and do some lighting. Let's get the this stuff going right now. And we're going to come up here and arm our emergency lights. No smoking. Seatbelts sign on while they're boarding. Um, we do have some lights for a panel we're going to play with, but we'll wait till it gets dark, and then we'll adjust all of our lighting. You see in the center of our screen. I was pointing at the lights, but I realized you can't see my cursor. So um, we will adjust those lights in a minute. In fact, I really want to adjust this too. i got to figure that out. Anyway. All right, emergency lights. Oh, yes, now we're going to test the stall horn, which I hope we don't hear, because if we do, then we're in big trouble, because this will go into a deep stall that you cannot recover from. Um, window heat on. 
And what is next? APU bleed. Now remember, we're doing the work of three people. This is a three-person aircraft, which is fine, but it makes it a lot of work, especially when we fly slant alpha. It's exhausting, takes a lot of concentration, but it's worth it and is very busy. No downtime. All right, cooling doors open. They always start open. Um, adjust panel switches, which you don't need to right now. We will when it gets dark. We can now disconnect our air cart and ground power. And I did something right because we're still running. APU's on anyway. DC meters go to ESSTR, whatever that means. I can't remember. I used to know gas per fan comes on and the right AC pack comes on. So we are comfortable and our passengers aren't sweltering back there. All right, cruising altitude today is going to be 29,000 feet. We don't have enough time to climb higher. Normally, you'd fly at 36,000 from Chicago to Minneapolis and back, but this is not a good climber. So 29,000 feet it is. Landing altitude, I got to get down there here. Whoopsies. That's like that. Landing altitude, like 835 feet or a little less than that. So let's... Get this to 835 is going to take a while. So again, through the magic of editing, it is going to suddenly be ready right now. 828.30. There we go. Um, a few boosts. Everybody's been turning on one for now and then the rest later. So I might as well do that too. I already turned on the seatbelt and the smoking sign. And now we're going to do flight plan stuff. So flight plan. Slant alpha. Which means we're going VOR to VOR. Below 28,000 feet. We're flying at 29,000 feet. Whatever. We'll still call this slant alpha. Um, and the reason for that is if you go higher than that, you have to follow rules. And it's slant Zulu. I can't remember what it is above. Anyway, but we're going to do slant alpha. Call this slant alpha. VOR to VOR. Busy, 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 busy. So our first, first of all, we're going to set our... Um, I'm going to move this over for a reason. We're going to set our final VOR at the airport here in NAV2. And we're going to use that so we can make sure we're at least 11 nautical miles away. It's kind of like an arc. Again, I'll talk about our approach when it's time to do our approach. But that's just ready to go because it's such a short flight. That's going to be there. So the way this is going to work... We're going to tune in our first VOR, which is 113 even, right there. Then we're going to tune in our second VOR, which is 114 and a third, like so. And we're going to tune this in as well. So we're going to use NAV2 so we know how far we are from the next VOR. So when we come here, you see that DME2, that says 000 miles. When that gets to be 20 miles... That's where we're going to switch to the next VOR for inbound as opposed to outbound of where we're coming from. You will see this in action. I'm not going to make you watch every single VOR change because there's like 9 or 10 of them or 8 of them, whatever. But we'll do a couple. So NAV1 is going to be our main instrument we're going to use to tune in the VORs. In fact, the first one at 113 even is going to be at 330 degrees. So we go like this. Whoops. And VOR2 is going to be distance so we know when we can change. I'm choosing 20 miles as an arbitrary number. Um, the flight way I'm following from Sky Vector is for GPS because VORs are pretty much obsolete. So I decided on 20 miles. That's what we're going to use NAV2 for. And I double check, triple checking, 113 and a half. The next VOR is 114 and a third, 114 and a third. And then we'll go from there, inbound, outbound, blah, 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 blah. Um, our destination VOR for the ARC is already set. And that is flight plan stuff. Um, if you're wondering about altitude, normally we would go to about 8,000 feet. Actually, here we probably go 10,000 feet. And then tra air traffic control will clear us to 12 and then... 18 and then our cruise but we're just gonna go right up to cruise because we don't have air traffic control and it's gonna take me forever to get up there anyway because this thing does not climb fast at all so by the time we would get clearance we wouldn't even be at that altitude and etc now we can turn on the rest of our fuel pumps i know i'm talking quickly that's because it's very late at night and i'm wired and i want to get on the show on the road before that sun sets and then i'll calm down i promise 
All right, now we got to close the cooling doors. And um, whoopsies. Ah, where is it? How did I miss that? Anyway, here we go. Again, this takes a while, but I'm going to use the magic of editing. And the doors are both closed right now. See that? Nice. Now I have to turn off the AC pack so we have enough power to start the engines and make sure all the bleeds are open, and they are. So now, in version two, we have to call ground crew. We call ground crew. You hop out here, that is a different plane that keeps zooming in. And we turn on the ghost. And this tells us where we're gonna taxi to. We wanna go that way. Um, we can adjust the angle, we don't even need to. So we're gonna release the parking brake. Then we're gonna hit auto. It's going to start our taxi. That can go away. And we're running APU power, so now we can just start our engines, just like in real life. Um, 2, 3, 1 will do. Come over here. As soon as this gets to 25 N2, we'll introduce power. So there is 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, and 25. Did I say 22? I meant 25. Introduce power. As soon as we hear this click, we'll start 3. And there's a click. We'll start 3. There's 22, 24, and 25. Introduce power. Now we could wait for everything to stabilize and for our pressure lights to go out, blah, blah, blah. But again, I'm trying to beat the sunset. And we're just going to cruise right along. First engine starting. There's 21, 22, 23, 24. And introduce that. And are we still taxiing? We have stopped taxiing. So I need to come down here set my parking brake. Because my yoke will disengage the parking brake. Like so. But it will not engage it for some strange reason. Alright, I guess it's probably just a different map, that's all. All right, um, now we can do our hydraulics. Hydraulics A and B, this is so we can taxi with our nose tiller and we can let the flaps out. That's what that's for. All right, close the bus ties. In version one, you only needed to do the one in the middle and they would all close, but now in version two, you have to do them all. And once you close the gen ties, you can turn on the galley power. And you can turn both AC packs on so everybody's more comfortable. Watching the PSI balance out. Cargo heat can go to normal. The central powers can go to generator. That's in the middle here. AC meters should be bus tie automatically, and they are. And make sure there are no lights on this engineer panel. No lights up here. No lights down here. That means we did everything right, if you can believe it. Fuel heat is already off, as it should be. Anti-ice I'm not going to worry about, but I am going to turn on our probe heaters, which is your PyTOT heat. And now we can come back here and kill the APU, and I get nervous every time because you can hear it wind down, and I think it's my engines. Let's listen to that. Oh, that's so awesome. All right, we'll switch our pressure switch from ground to flight. And Gasper fan. Oh. Hang on. Passenger, let's warm it up just a tad. There we go. And the Gasper fan can come off now. And we can close APU bleed since the APU isn't running. Alright, come back over here and check our reference and speed bugs. So here we go. Take off 20 flaps at 116 knots. And our first flag is at 116, so we'll go a little past that. When we take off and flaps 20 degrees, it's at like 4 o'clock on our flap dial. Alright, so what are we going to do now? We're going to come down here and turn on our weather, which we're not going to have any weather. It looks clear and we don't have any traffic, but it would show up there. On the, that rainbow would clear it out and that would be our radar. And we are ready to taxi. So here we go. Taxi lights on. And um, start lighting flaps out now because I have a horrible time remembering the flaps and auto brakes RTO rejected takeoff and we're going to taxi now and then we'll finish up so like usual I'm going to hop outside just because I like to see everything and looks like we are going to beat the sunset I'm so happy <sighs> release the parking brake and 
Keep going. Keep letting flaps out as we go. And that was a 16 minute, 49 second introduction and startup. Cool. Usually it takes me like 25 minutes to do that. I'm not trying to be in a hurry, but I kind of am, I guess. And here we go. We are just going to taxi to runway 10 left, if I didn't already mention that. How much farther do we have to go on these flaps? Oh, we're at 20 degrees. Okay, we'll stop the flaps. And we'll just taxi right along here. Have a look outside the wing. Isn't that awesome? Too bad we can't stay that way. But here we go. And off into the sunset, sort of. We are going to face the other way when we start, but... Um, it's kind of funny, that taxi center line looks like it's going off to the side, but it isn't. Alright, that's neat, but I want to go back outside. The center of that airport almost looks like a hotel. It's really hard to hard to taxi backwards. <laughs> there we go. I know we're cruising right along. There's Chicago though in the background. All right, let's um, yeah, let's fly. Let's operate the plane and stop the sightseeing. But that's the hardest part. To me, that's the hardest part of flight simulator. When you're doing commercial flights, is um flying the airplane and not sightseeing. In fact, when I did my practice flight in Minneapolis, I had a really hard time approaching Minneapolis because I wanted to sightsee and you can't. You can't do both. You can always use the replay feature though. That is there. Some trains in the background which in real life isn't freight. That would be um that would be the subway. Well above ground at that point but I did take the subway once from downtown, from the loop all the way to the airport at one in the morning when I was in Chicago with a friend. It was interesting. Please dog around the train for a little bit of it. All right, we got clearance to get on into the runway here. So we're gonna go to the runway and stop and fine tune a few things and then we'll take off. But it's a quiet night, so we're not interrupting anything by Go not to the runway. All right, time to hop inside. And one of our radios, coincidentally, is tuned to the ILS of this airport because they reuse frequencies, and therefore we are picking up the inner marker or whatever. All right, so let's um, straighten out. It is very hard to talk and fly at the same time. All right, let's stop there. And set parking brake. Can I do it like that? Yep. There are a couple things we got to do. We need to, first of all, actually, turn on our landing lights. Actually, you know what? Taxi. In this aircraft, I think you keep taxi lights on. And your landing lights. Right. All oh, that beeping is annoying. Anyway. Um, autopilot. We are going to hand fly, but we're going to set to runaway heading just in case something happens, which means we're going to come up here. What, what in the world? There we go. We're going to set this to heading just in case I accidentally hit autopilot or I feel like using it. We're ready to go. And our flaps are down to 20. We've already checked our flags. Landing lights and taxi lights are on. We'll note the time on the clock, which is what? What are we at? Four minutes. Coming up on four minutes to 6 a.m. We'll remember that so we can mark our flight time. And um, we are ready to go. We'll release the parking brake, hold the brake so we can spool up and stabilize. And then we're going to give it 97% and one. We are not going to do 100% on takeoff in version two of this aircraft. So there we go. All the way forward and then I'll back off right about now so that we stay at 97%. Whoops, that's a little less. That's 97 right there. And we are on our way. And 
There's 90, 100. And there is VR rotate. We are going up, 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 up. Positive rate. Nice. Circuit those flaps in. We got to stay on schedule. Landing gear is in. And right now, I would normally engage autopilot, but we are not today. We are just going to sit here and fly the plane. I wish I could remember what tower view was. Is it shift three? There it is. And there we are. Well, no, that's a runway view. Whatever. All right. I got to fly the plane. Flaps coming in because we're almost at 200 knots. Looking at the skyline. There we go. Skyline in the sunset. So we're going to head towards the lake and then we're going to make a sharp left and line up with their VOR and that's when we'll engage autopilot. Alright, a couple things we got to do to clean up this aircraft. We need to dial our engines back to 92% or we're going to start on fire. So there's 91 and a half. Good enough. Still a positive rate. 200 knots or so. Let's speed up a little bit. I want to climb at 250. 10,000 feet and then we're gonna go all the way up to um 280 let's hop outside though I think I can whoops hang on I can't fly this outside quite yet and right, now let's hop outside a second there we go nice view of Chicago while we take off in the last moment of sunset well that looks cool too taking screenshots that's why he's pausing a second well, that's a great view of the airport that's pretty straight, considering I'm hand flying. Midway is over there. And there we go. All right, as awesome as that is, we really do gotta fly this thing, so. All right. All right, I think I cleaned up here. Um, actually, I can turn off the auto brakes. That's the only thing I missed, I think. There we go. All right, quite a bit different hand flying than using autopilot, but it's fun and it's easy. This is an extremely stable aircraft. All right, bye bye Chicago. We are going to make our turn now. And then I'm making sure I stay below 250 though, because we're only at 7,000 feet. Standard rate turn, as sharp as that feels. We don't need to quite climb that steeply, though. I'm keeping it a... Well, there we go. Pull back a little bit. There we go. Watch our vertical speed indicator, the VSI, to try to make it somewhat realistic and comfortable. Although, this would be quite a roller coaster ride, I think. Alright. Look at that sunset. Nice. Oh, man, that looks so realistic. I'm doing this on a 24 inch monitor and um, at 1080p. It just looks fabulous. I'm considering getting a 31 inch monitor I found. Still 1080p though. I don't want to get a 4K monitor because my laptop would run this at a higher resolution and it would be extremely difficult to get the frame rates. So, anyway, alright, there's 250 knots. We got to mind our speed. In fact, we're almost at 10,000 feet, so I'm just going to boom bump this up to 280 because that is our ideal speed for climbing. But we can't do that till 10,000 feet, which is about now. And we're about to line up with our VOR. We're still hand flying. We're just going to admire this amazing, amazing scenery. All right, I better pay attention to what I'm doing here. All right, 10,000 feet, we are clear to go higher and or faster, and we will. And we're about to line up with our VOR. And yes, I will turn the landing lights off in a second. Remember, we're doing a three-person job right now, so. We're gonna head towards this VOR. 
Oh, I'm going to overshoot here if I'm not careful. Don't want to overshoot. We also want to maintain our speed. There we go. That's about right on target. Look at that. All right, so now we come down here. IS hold. Nah, well, we got to do altitude. Altitude. Where are you? Oh, I got to engage autopilot first. Anyway. All right, what are we doing? Are we ready for autopilot? Yep, autopilot engaged. We'll nose down to get some speed. And we are armed for alt, IS hold, and nav lock. And we're six miles to the VOR. Whoops, I forgot about those landing lights. Off, 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 and the taxi lights, which I left on. All right, here we go. We're five away, so we already got to make our change. So we're going to go here because we're so high in the air, remember, that we're not ever going to get to zero. So we're going to come back down here, go to heading for right now. Then we are going to do an outbound radial of 293. So we move this to 293. And we'll wait for station passage, station passage before we do anything else. All right, so let's just double check. Flaps have been in for a long time. Landing gears locked. Auto brakes are off. Landing lights and everything are off, which they better be. We're already at 14,000 feet. I'm just going to look out the window. That jerkiness is not frame rates. It's my bad mouse control. Another screenshot. That's awesome. Whoops, wrong button. All right, still waiting for station passage, I think. And don't worry, I'm not going to talk the whole time, and you're not going to watch every minute of this video. I'm just getting set up still and enjoying every moment. All right, we're at Station Passage. So you want to do 293 outbound, so we're going to go over here so we have a comfortable turn. And technically, we can just watch instruments if we needed to. So once that line on our VOR starts moving, then that means we're established, and then we'll switch back to VOR lock instead of heading bug. And we're at 280 knots, perfectly fine. Everything is good, smooth as silk. And then what'll happen is that triple zero you see, will start picking up the next VOR. That's the 114.3. And when that gets down to 20, I will use heading hold again, make some adjustments on the radio and our dial, and then switch back to nav lock or VOR lock, and you'll see that in action. I'll show you that. Ooh, it just got darker outside. So we're still not established on the VOR. Well, they're starting to wiggle a little bit. And there it is. We'll let it get a little bit closer, else we're going to do all these S-curves and things, and we don't want to do that. It makes it uncomfortable for our passengers. So we'll go a little bit here. All right, we'll come down here. We'll go to nav lock now. And if you also noticed, we picked up the next VOR at 43 miles, and it's going quick. So as soon as that gets to 20, we make our next change. So even our longest distance, we make changes every four or five minutes at most. We're going to increase the throttle a little bit. We can go all the way to 92. And what you're looking for is if you go over here, you see that those three temps and those three oil pressures, those all have to be in the green. If they hit the red, you start on fire. I've been told in real life you would actually use N1, I mean N2, but the way Fly JSIM has it set up is to use N1. And there we go. So that's about it. So I'm done talking. Um, but what you're going to see is you're going to see some sightseeing and then you're going to see some VOR changes. But that will be set to background music. And um, you will hear me speak again at top of descent. Which will be three or four. One, two, three, six, seven change, seven VOR changes from now. Which is four VORs, 30 miles out. And I will talk to you then. Enjoy.
Alright, so we're about to reach top of descent. Um, there's one something I wanted to point out outside though. I've talked about this before, but with night lighting in X-Plane 10, there's only a small patch around you that gets night lighting. You can see the square around us where the lighting just stops. So when you're 29,000 feet up, it seems kind of silly, but when you're doing a VFR night flight, then it's perfectly fine. Of course, this is a good thing overall because if more pixels were lit up, that would be lower frame rates, etc. But um, So there you go, you can kind of see there's that square around us. All right, enough getting nauseous here. Let's um, hop inside and get ready to descend. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna end up going down to 4,000 feet. Again, no air traffic control to step us down. So we need to be at 4,000 feet to catch the ILS in Minneapolis. So we're just gonna go straight there. Let's come down here and kill that for a second. And rearm it for 4,000 feet. And I killed the throttle. And as soon as we get down to 300 knots, I will engage IS hold again. But I don't want to wait till I slow down or else we're going to tip st steeply up. And we're at 25 miles, so I also have to make a VOR change at the same time. So this is going to be tricky. So let's go here and come down here and engage heading hold for a second. And we need to switch over to 117.9 and come over here and engage IS hold and then come back and then we're going to change this to 301 which isn't that much of a difference so let's go over here a little bit and then we'll catch it then actually this is lock above so that means it's already been detected so let's just come back and engage it and get our next VOR set up which will be 115 Point seven. Same thing here. Get this set up so we know how far away we are. So we're at, we're going. What are we doing? We're going inbound once. We're going inbound one seventeen point nine. Our next VOR is one fifteen point seven. We're going to go outbound at three twelve. How far are we here? Seventeen. So we have to make that change soon. We're descending. All right. So at three hundred knots, we want to descend at fifteen hundred feet per minute, not twenty one hundred. So I'm going to increase throttle a little bit. So that we descend at 1500 feet per minute and if I need to descend more steeply I'll descend at 2000 feet per minute if it's um, if we're out of time I can slow us or if we need more time I can slow us down to buy its time there's a bunch of things we can do but this is what I calculated so there we go and pretty soon we are going to Drop the VORs actually, and then start to fly manually. Well, I, not too soon. Um, 96 miles. Yeah, in about 96 miles, we're going to fly by hand. So we're descending well, 25,000 feet and falling. 10 miles from 117.9. So there you go, top of descent. Um, we'll go back to the sightseeing. And I will talk to you again just before we take over manually. And I'll discuss the special approach at that time as well.
All right, thought I'd jump back in now. We're about to um, go by Hudson, Wisconsin. You see it off the nose there, and that gap is um, Mississippi River. Mississippi River? St. Croix River, sorry. Hudson, Wisconsin on the left. Minnesota on the right. St. Croix River in front of us. We're going to catch this other VOR and then heading more towards Minneapolis, which I don't think think is in view quite yet but it will be very very soon and I slowed down our descent rate a little bit um, I slowed us down to 250 knots already because we're coming up on 10,000 feet and in fact there's 10,000 feet right there so we'll get all of our lights on at least I've seen everybody else turn all the lights on and we'll get ready here we're gonna set our auto brakes to max because I have a hard time stopping in time um, such cool scenery. I think that's airport up there, actually. We'll see in a minute. Um, what else are we doing? I'm doing things kind of out of order. But I, like I said, I slowed our descent. I already slowed down our speed. I turned on our landing lights, armed auto brakes. And pretty soon we'll catch this VOR. And then we will start flying by hand. Yep, that is your airport up there. You see off the middle of the nose. Um, but we have a ways to go yet. There you go. Now I can see our airport a little bit better. Now it's on the left side of the screen. That makes it a little bit easier to see. Um, we're actually going this to the left of it. So we're... Looks like we're aiming right for it, but we're not. In fact, I'm going to move over so we can catch this VOR a little more quickly. And then I'll discuss our approach so we're gonna start losing a little bit more altitude now go down about a thousand feet per minute not quite a thousand feet per minute and um let's see what do we want to do next nothing i'm just trying to fill time i don't need to fill time we're just going to sit here and fly this plane in fact i'm going to put in our ils right now which is 110.7 for runway 12 left there's 110.7 and I'll be switching this over to heading soon and that's when we will um, that's when we will switch our dial over to the ILS. I'm trying to do too many things at once, I'm sorry. So anyway, it looks like we're heading over the airport. What we're doing is we're going to go beyond the airport, and that's how we're going to catch our VOR. But at that point, I think I might be flying manually anyway. We're a little bit farther north than on my practice flight, just the way things worked out and the timing of switching VORs. But um, there you can see 494, Highway 10, Highway 52, police car down there. There's our runways. We'll be run landing on the right runway, but from the other side. So it'll be 12 left. There you go. Suburbs are coming into view. Let's check out some wing views while we're waiting. There you go. That's cool. Airport's about to come in view off our wing here. Let's check out the other side. Going down to Rochester that way. There you can so there you go. That looks awesome. Look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that traffic. I have cars turned way down and look how much traffic there is. That's hilarious. Alright, we're back up front. So like I said, we're going around the airport. In fact, you see that airport straight in front of us? That's the airport we're gonna aim for. So we're actually gonna switch over to um, heading now. Heading's already engaged. Good. And we're actually going to a little bit round. We're going to pretend that air traffic control is giving us vectors now to set up our approach. Get out of the way of departing aircraft. That would have been a little close, I think. Here at 7,000 feet. Come down a little bit more quickly here. So this is what we're going to do. Normally, to approach 12 left and 12 right, you go way out to the suburbs where the interstates 494 and 394 intersect in Minnetonka where the Carlson Towers are and you come back in. It's 15 to 17 nautical mile approach. That's your normal approach for this airport. But when I flew here last it was like midnight or something and the captain got on the loudspeaker and just as we got over Flying Cloud which is that airport directly in front of us 
He said, we have been cleared for an early approach, and we're about 10, uh, I don't know, we're about 12,000 feet up. Much, much, much higher than we are now. And he killed the throttle, fully engaged spoilers, and we dropped like a rock. And we turned right, and turned right, and we landed, just like that. Very, very, very short approach. Um, in fact, our DME-2 is kicked in now at 10 miles. We're going to do an 11 to 12 nautical mile arc. And that's about what we did um, when I was landing here in real life. And it was startling and scary, but fun. Made people gasp a little bit, but there's an airport there. Looking good. And we will have a really nice view of the skyline, by the way. All right, we're about to take over manually here. In fact, I have the ILS tuned to 110.7, which I can actually tune it now because we're on heading. Let me go over here and set it up. It's like 121 degrees. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. That's 12 left. We'll try to do an 11 to 12 DME arc. So let's go this way over Flying Cloud Airport. And um, pretty soon I'll kill throttle and we'll take, or kill autopilot. We'll do this manually. So I don't think I'm going to need spoilers because we're pretty low. So I'm going to engage spoilers now or auto arm. I'm trying to talk at the same time. All right, I'm going to arm spoilers. Um, auto brakes are already set. Landing lights are on. Taxi lights and turn off lights are on. What else do we need to do? We need to check our VREF. So landing. 30 degree flaps at 124 knots. We'll come down here and reference 30 degree flaps a second from the end. And it is now time to kill throttle and kill autopilot. And we are flying manually, folks. You don't see this very often with me. I normally do autopilot all the way until minimums. There's Flying Cloud Airport. We'll wait till we pass the airport. And then we'll bank right hard and head directly for the skyline of downtown Minneapolis. All right, I'm trying to bleed off some speed now and not lose too much altitude, but when we make this arc, we need to be at 4,000 feet, so I need to lose speed and altitude. You know what? I'm going to engage spoilers. Listen to this sound. Do you hear that? Isn't that the coolest thing you've ever heard? And as soon as we hit 200, the flaps are going to start coming out. There we go, first set of flaps. I guess we're doing a 16 knock mile arc just because I'm enjoying this so much. I don't want this to end. All right. Slowing down. We'll start losing altitude again. We have to be at 4,000 feet. In fact, I'm going to set my heading bug. Can I do this while I set my heading bug, do you think? It's 120. So I know where the airport is. Whoops, whoops. Come this way. Come this way. Okay, let's get back up here now. All right. Look at that, it's picking up the ILS already up ahead. Coming up on 4,000 feet. I'm gonna bring the spoilers in now and arm them again. We're gonna float up while our flaps come out. And we need to, yeah, we gotta come way down still. I'm gonna bring, the, there's the skyline in front of us. Do you see that? I'm gonna bring spoilers back out. Just so we can lose some more altitude quickly. But this is how we did it in real life. It was even more dramatic than this. Like I said, it went from about twelve to 14,000 feet straight down. It was crazy. All right, time to bring the spoilers in and arm them again because we're losing too much speed. There we go. I'm going to keep my speed up a little bit. Let's do gear down. We only need to do one more set of flaps. And there is our runway right there. So this is a very short approach. You would normally not do it this short, but I'm going to... I gotta zoom in here. What is one? Was it 124 plus five? So that's where we're at right now. So let's gain a little bit of speed. We're flying dirty, which means our flaps are out, and we're a, we're totally established on the ILS. We're about to hit the glide slope now. I'm gonna do flap 30 now and just fly dirty. And still need to lose some altitude. I'm really enjoying that skyline. Let's do a quick outside view that I really have to fly this plane. So there we are. We're flying dirty because we have such a short approach. 
take a screenshot. Skyline on the left, airport on the right. Gear down, flaps down, lights. Spoilers armed. Auto brakes armed. I'm going a little faster than I want to. But we have the right glide path, 500 feet per minute or so, because we are going towards the runway. And I'm looking visual, but we're not technically flying visually. Technically, we're doing IFR. I'm just enjoying the, the scenery best as I can. What do we have for wing view? There's a the suburbs out there. This is awesome. Look at that. All right, we got to fly this plane. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? Okay, there we go. Not so bad. We're so good. But there's a skyline Minneapolis again. And we're actually going to fly right over my house where I used to live. It says we're getting a little low, so let's pull up until we're better established before we do our 500 foot per minute drop. I'm going to zoom in on my speed again. What am I looking for? That's about what we want to land at. A little less than that. All right. So this is about a half approach, half distance approach. So we're going to go like that. Oh, we need a little bit more speed. We're going a little bit too slowly. Doing a lot of things at once. So my main problem is I'm trying to sightsee. There's Kane in front of us. Jane's Field. Skyline to the left. Alright, I really want to sightsee, but I gotta fly this plane. If I really want to sightsee, I can do a replay, right guys and gals? Alright, let's fly this plane. Here we go. We're about to connect with the VOR. We're way too high. I'm at ILS. 35W in front of us. 62 goes around the airport. 77 going off to the right. Alright, let's get down. Get down. Get down. There we go. Again, nice skyline view right there. On the screenshot. All right. Done with the sightseeing. All right, we're about to cross over our runway. I'm looking out the window and at the um, ILS on my gauge. Our speed is wonderful. Actually, let's go a little faster. All right. Live slope is great, so let's do about 500 feet per minute now. Even though I'm doing 1,000 feet per minute. All right, let's do 500 feet per minute. Let's line up. Sorry if I keep bumping the microphone, but um, it's right in the way of my yoke. All right, we are fully established. We're getting blown around, though. And we are crossing over my old house right... About, I see the road. Now, that's where I used to live. We should be getting our 500 warning pretty soon. A little bit more throttle. We're dropping down more than 500 feet per minute. Oh, I know. We're fine. We're fine. I feel like we're getting blown around here. All right, right on the glide slope, 500 feet per minute, good speed. We're about to cross over 62. And we should get the 100 mark pretty soon. There's our 500. Speed is good, glide slope is perfect. We're a little bit to the right of center, but that's okay. To cross over 62, which is a great sight when you're driving, by the way. Should be getting 100 pretty soon. Bringing back throttle. Where's our 50? Where's our 50? There's 100. There we go. Spoilers out. Reversers. Nice. That screaming you heard is not screaming, by the way. That are that's the spoilers engaging. I, took me a while to figure that out. Reversers down to sixty. Manual braking now. Reversers out. Use um. 
Flaps are coming in. Boy, am I tired. I told you I'm way past my bedtime. And we'll pull off here, and then we will have to stop to let out our... to um, turn off our lights, because I don't have a co-pilot. So let's stop here a second. Flaps are coming in. And let's go up here and turn off our lights. Let's leave the taxi lights on. There you go. We can turn this off now to disarm. Excellent. All right, let's keep rolling. Let's hop outside, I guess. All right, where are we going? Let's go to Delta. Well, Delta's kind of all over the place, but... The spoilers are back in. Flaps have come in already. All the appropriate lights are on. And we are going to taxi over here. Oh, that was fun. Nice landing, too. Wasn't perfect, I admit. It was not a perfect landing, but it was a nice landing. This aircraft with night textures in replay mode is see-through. I'm not kidding. But there's plenty of delta to look at. Look at this. That is cool. This, um, it's a freeware airport. I have not made my version for the scenery gateway yet. So this is a freeware airport that came with some really crappy Minneapolis buildings. So I took out all the buildings except the airport because the airport itself is awesome. Left the airport, took out everything else, and then I used someone else's freeware for the buildings. And that's how I did that. Let's see, which taxiway do we want? We want this first one, right? Yeah. So I've got two freewares for Minneapolis running right now to get this scenery. Um, for prepared and FSX, there is a professional payware Minneapolis in the process of being finished. But nothing professional payware for Minneapolis for explain that I know of just the freeware stuff but the freeware is really good as you can tell no complaints here all right we're actually going to taxi around one more turn and then we'll park this thing nice wing view although I can't really see much of the wing but you can see the terminals and here you just see the control tower and some good stuff let's hop back up front though so we don't crash all right, we're about where we want to be, and we do not have a flag person, so I'm going to use the outside to park this thing. We don't have anybody to direct us in real life. Sorry I'm not staying directly on the taxiway lights, but I'm just looking around and enjoying everything. I'm a big fan of eye candy. But, um, it's hard to do both at once. Fly or operate an aircraft and look at eye candy. All right, we're about there. I'm not gonna make you watch me taxi too much longer. Although there's something soothing about taxiing that isn't boring. All right, we're gonna pull ahead of that gate. Well, you probably can't see what I'm looking at because my cursor doesn't show up in bandy cam. But it's up there, I promise. Hang out by that other Delta plane. Whoop, oh, there's a cargo vehicle in front of us. That's fine. We're turning before that anyway. Actually, you know what? We will look at a replay because I want you all to see this texture problem and then maybe someone watching will tell me how to fix it. It does not happen in daylight. It only happens at night and you'll see what I'm talking about here. Let's get in here. Again, we don't have anybody telling us where to go. So we're just going to have to do it ourselves. Let's just stop right there. That jetway would come out. Okay, let's go down here and do our parking brake. Alright, let's, um... Whoops. There we go. Oh, that looks awesome. Let's look at that a second, because when we come back from a replay, our textures are going to be screwed up. That is so cool. Alright, I did not start the APU, by the way, because I'm going to use external power after the replay. Alright, imagine... Or just remember how awesome this looks and let's go to a replay and I'll show you what happens. Okay, this is really funny. When I was setting up my replay, my textures were fine and I was about to say, look it, 
The textures are working, and as soon as I opened my mouth, the textures disappeared. See how we're invisible? We're like see-through? I don't really understand what's going on here. Look at that. See? So strange. Yeah, let's hop back to real time, I guess. So here we are in real time, and see, it's still invisible. So yeah, I don't know. But um, yeah, as you saw when I set up my replay, the textures were there, and then I opened my big mouth, and now they're gone. That is so weird. If anybody knows why, why it does that, it never used to do that to updated to 10.51, by the way. And it doesn't do that in daylight. So anyway, let's hop inside and shut this thing down, and... Turn on some external power, and um, you can gather your answers and leave them in the comments below. I checked the forums, by the way, and for the support forums for this aircraft, no one ever... Cool, AC connected. No one, um, no one has said anything, so I don't know what's going on. We'll leave one pack on, we'll turn that on, we can turn that off. What are we going to do? Oh, we're not going to start the APU because we have external power. A lot of airports don't want you to use APU anyway. Um, we can turn off some of this stuff. We can just screw around with this all day. What we're really going to do is just kill power. And then everything will turn off on its own and the lights will turn on on their own. We can turn off the seatbelt signs now. No smoking has to stay on. Um, anyway, there we go. All lit up. Everybody's deboarding. Well, or falling out. The sides of the airplane disappeared. Anyway, um, let me hop outside and find a nice view where this invisible airplane is not going to be affected. Let's just go way out here and look at this airport. Again, this is a freeware airport. I look, I'm not going to guess because I'm going to look it up. Just look in the um, description of the video below and you'll see all the freeware I use. Um, I got St. Paul modeled, Minneapolis modeled, a bunch of cool stuff. I am going to do a Minneapolis VR VFR flight soon. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the flight. If you found me by accident, please subscribe. If you're a regular subscriber, thank you for your continuing support. If anybody knows why I have an invisible airplane after using replay mode, please um, please tell me why so I can fix it. Again, it didn't start happening until I updated 10.51. And like I said, it doesn't happen in the daytime. So, hope you enjoyed the flight. I really enjoyed this flight. It is way past my bedtime here in real life. I'm exhausted, and I get wired when I'm exhausted. But um, hope you had as much fun as I did, and I'll catch you on the next one.